anytime tensions flare up across the world, there are alarming reports about our adversary cyber capabilities. For example, as Iran and the US increasingly spar in the Middle East with drone strikes and missile salvos, the threat of cyber attacks tipping the crisis into full-on war is an ongoing concern. After all, Iran has a history of using cyber attacks against financial systems, oil companies, and key infrastructure. And the US is credited with creating the Stuxnet worm, one of the only known cyber attacks that caused actual physical damage. It caused Iranian centrifuges to spin out of control, temporarily halting Iranian nuclear enrichment. Iran and the United States have engaged in cyber attacks against one another in the past and will continue to do so in the future. But does that mean that cyber attacks will escalate into a conventional war? Well, fortunately, cyber attacks operate differently than conventional attacks, and here's what you need to know. The destructive effects of cyber attacks are nowhere near as violent as conventional warfare, like airstrikes or missile attacks. So far, cyber attacks have not led to immediate and extensive casualties, civilian or military. It turns out that it's hard to use cyber attacks to achieve any physical consequences, much less serious physical harm. Even Iran's most successful cyber attack, when it erased data from the world's largest oil company, had limited impact on oil prices or global oil supply. My own research finds that cyber attacks create a threshold that restrains escalation. Americans are significantly less likely to support retaliation against a cyber attack, even if it causes as much damage as an airstrike. But the damage that cyber attacks can do is subtler and more long-term than, say, a missile strike. Russia has used its cyber capabilities to increase distrust in institutions like our elections and the media. And they can also be used as part of asymmetric warfare to complement conventional operations. Daily attacks and probes can be an irritant and a distraction, drawing attention and resources away from more serious challenges. The question is, how should the United States deal with the threat of cyber attack? Well, deterrence is unlikely to work for all but the most significant cyber attacks. Cyber operations themselves can't really deter other attacks, whether in cyberspace or other more conventional domains of warfare. Why is this? For deterrence to work, there have to be clearly communicated consequences. But virtual attacks often aren't tangible or permanent, and since they are covert, they're less likely to deter, precisely because they are unknown. The good news is that the United States is finding better methods to deal with long-term cyber threats. Instead of trying to deter most cyber attacks, the Department of Defense has shifted its efforts to preemptively degrading the cyber capabilities of other adversaries. But there's more to do. The government must work with the private sector to share information about existing threats. And due to the nature of cyber attacks, the public must be better educated when they are exposed to foreign influence. Cyber attacks are not likely to have devastating short-term consequences, but they can gradually erode the foundations of social, political, and economic stability over time. Tackling this challenge will require the U.S. to harness all of its power across the federal government, the private sector, and its citizens.